Because when you look feminine, you have more confidence. You can be comfortable and feminine. The simplest things when you're going shopping will make you look more feminine. What do you think is the most common shoe mistake that you see when it comes to femininity and style? everyone welcome back to the fascinating womanhood channel on our channel we talk about everything that has to do with developing femininity and building strong long-lasting loving relationships i'm cherry lynn and i'm here with my mom dixie andalyn forsyth hi hi so we're here today to talk about 10 tips that we have that we use in our lives to help us be more radiant and feminine. I know this is a really popular topic out there. There's tons of videos covering this, but we wanted to give our take on it because we're asked about it so much. And we know that looking feminine is not just about what's on the outside. Your outwards appearance isn't the only part of femininity. We've talked about that so much on our channel. You can We can attach all the different videos that we've done on confidence and femininity from within. But today we thought it would be fun to just talk about out, outside appearance. We all have to decide what to wear every day. We all have to present ourselves in some way. And a lot of women are afraid that if they do, they'll get, uh, I've heard women say they get afraid they'll get stared at. Then and if the average woman is wearing the, what is we call the uniform t-shirt, jeans, and athletic shoes, that's how you fit in. But it, is, it isn't going to make you feel your best. You just, we want to feel our best because when you look feminine, you have more confidence. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up about the uniform because I think a lot of us just kind of, we don't even really think about it and we just go go to and it's easy but these tips are also incredibly easy there for any kind of style if you're more of a tomboy or if you're more of a busy mom and you don't have a lot of time all the way to if you're older and you have a little bit more time and you want to amp up your style all of this can work for any any age any st stage of life and we emphasize too that some people say well i want to be comfortable you can be comfortable and feminine because we want to be comfortable too and and we are so these tips fit in with being comfortable so oh, the first one is embrace comfort and gentle fabrics. When you're going shopping, we just want to encourage you to look for fabrics that are huggable and cozy. So that could be silks, that could be really lush knits. Cotton. Fine cottons. The simplest things when you're going shopping will make you look more feminine. You want something that feels soft. If you need to have something in the winter that is really, really warm, you can layer. I know a lot of ladies like to pick these puffy things that aren't quite as feminine. You can still layer those things with feminine fabrics. And I can say from personal experience, when I'm wearing a fabric that's really soft to the touch, Bob loves just touching it. He loves kind of uh, hu hugging me more because I'm wearing those fabrics. You're wearing so that's like a nice side effect to picking yeah. soft fabrics is that your guy might want to snuggle you a little bit more. Number two is denim harmony, finding your perfect fit. The reason why we put denim on here is it's become a bit of a uniform. And I think denim is great if you're picking the right fit for your body. I can't tell you how many times I see women wearing poor fitting jeans, saggy in the in the backside area, and it just doesn't fit. And Or a wash that doesn't flatter their shape or a rise that doesn't flatter their midsection. Find denim that fits you. Invest in good denim because you'll wear it for years. And I know yeah. jeans can be really pricey, but if you can invest in just a couple pairs, maybe a darker and a medium or a darker and a lighter wash, maybe a, a couple of different legs that flatter your shape, you can wear those for years and years and years. But this is where you have to really quality over quantity, pick the jeans that fit you that are comfortable, but they're not saggy. Do you some, of these, <laughs> some of these super ripped jeans just don't look good. I mean, there's, there's some that are kind of flattering, but there's some that are just like they're hanging by a thread that I don't really think looks good on people. There's distressed and then there's ripped. Yes. yes I'm glad I think to me, that. distressed jeans are still feminine and they can still be very feminine, but, and maybe a rip, a little rip is, is a, can still be a little bit feminine, but the overly ripped jeans with tons of ripping, I personally do not think that that's polished. I don't think it's feminine. You might all, there might be people watching this that disagree, but that's just my personal opinion. And I just wanted to comment too, and you're saying find the right shape and the right leg. When I was growing up, there was one style that was in and you didn't have all these choices. This is so amazing now that you can find bootleg, straight leg and flare, and they're all okay. I've even seen, I love the high-waisted styles that are out right now and I wear those, but not everybody looks good in high-waisted styles. So don't don't say, oh, well, you know, that's all I can find. So I guess I'll wear the high-waisted style. If it doesn't look good on you, maybe you're a little bit shorter. Don't 
don't give in to that. If, if your hips are a little bit bigger and you don't look good in the skinny jean, you don't have to wear the skinny jean. Get a straight leg, get a bootleg, whatever you think looks good on you and flatters your shape. When you're flattering your shape, you look more feminine. Lastly about jeans, don't rely on jeans for your every single day outfit. And the only reason why we say that is because there's so many other things that you can choose that are so much more feminine. If you can pick a dress, if you can pick a skirt every once in a while, a nice pair of slacks, I think it's just gonna enhance your femininity. Uh, next, your gleaming signature hair. Did you guys know, I've known this for a while, but there's a lot of things that men notice instantly in women. And femininity isn't just about getting men to notice you. It is about how we feel and how we want to portray ourselves. But fun fact is that men notice your hair right away. And it's not about having supermodel hair. <laughs> it's about having clean, healthy, well-groomed hair yes. that looks good on you. I know some women are really against coloring their hair as they start to get gray. That's a personal decision that you have to make for yourself. But I personally think that as you keep your hair as youthful and as healthy as possible, you're, you're going to feel more feminine. You're going to look more feminine. Who doesn't want to feel their best? Uh, the next one is your facial canvas, accentuating your eyes versus your lips. A good rule of thumb is to pick one or the other, not both to accentuate. So do you want to really put some emphasis with your makeup on your eyes? Or do you want to put emphasis on your lips? Pick one. Try not to pick both because you are going to go overboard with your makeup and you're going to have way too much makeup. And I think equally, men do not like a lot of makeup. I don't like a ton of cakey makeup either. It's just not attractive in my opinion or polished. So you really want to get that balance with your makeup if you're really striving to look more feminine. Some ladies say their husbands don't like makeup on them. Kind of back to differ with that. I think most men don't know anything about makeup. And what they're actually saying is, I don't like a lot. I don't like real right. obvious makeup like you see on some people, especially online. Those You can look natural. I think what they mean is they want you to look natural. But zero makeup, especially as you get older, makes you look that much older, that much faster. If you're a lady that doesn't like to wear hardly any makeup, mascara, especially with this light coloring like what you and I have, if I don't have mascara on, people tend to ask me if I'm okay, if I'm tired, if I'm sick, just because I don't well, have mascara on. I one doesn't mean you ignore the other. You just go yeah. light. Like if you're, if you're emphasizing your eyes, you do something kind of simple on your lips. You don't emphasize it. That's what I do. I pretty much never emphasize my lips. I don't know why. I just don't like it on me. But you, you might like doing a red lip with a simpler just mascara or something. And that's great. Pick what you like, but pick one. I mean, my husband does not know anything about makeup and he tends to, if I'm not wearing any, he tends to ask me if I'm okay. He doesn't even realize. And I think, you know, there's some women that just don't need very much. I've known, I've had friends that like, they just don't need very much makeup. And I think that's great, but that doesn't mean zero. You don't have to have a liner and all this stuff. Some of us do, but like, I personally like to have a little bit more. color on our cheeks because that makes us look tired and ill if we're yeah. too, if we're too washed out. Yeah. Because a lot of us don't get it. Just, this is just if you want to look more feminine. If you don't want to look more feminine, you don't need to do all these things. But this is just the people asking us, how can I look more feminine? Pick one or the other. Okay. The next one, paint your closet vibrant by mastering color selection for your skin. This goes back to when you're going shopping. And we were talking earlier about selecting soft fabrics. When you're selecting your soft fabrics, really look for colors that that flatter your skin tone. You need to figure out what you look best in. I don't know if you've ever done the the, the vein test. Have you done the vein test? Uh, no, my mother did something different, but tell me the vein so test. So this isn't 100% foolproof, but it is a nice starting point to figuring out basic categories of colors that work well on your skin. What you do is you look at the veins on the underside of your wrist. If you mostly see veins that are blue or purple, you might look better in cool tones. If you see more greens, you'll fit more into the warmer color category. But if you see a bit of a combo of either green and blue, purple and green, blue and green, something like that, you'll fit into the neutral categories of colors. My mother had, uh, uh, and ears is much easier than, than grandma's. My, she had a whole ring of all these color samples, swatches, and she put them up to her face and mm -hmm. looked at her face. She put these different colors and she could tell by how she looked. But she had to collect all those. And with the vein test, you don't have to do that. You can do that with makeup and you can do it with clothes. And so if you go shopping for your makeup, for example, and you're like, I don't know if I need cool nude or warm nude or, so, you know, when you're looking at like foundations, you know, oh, well, I'm a cool or I'm a warm. I'm a combo. I have purple and green, so I can wear both. But I really prefer cool tones just because 
I just feel it better in them. I feel more feminine in them. So I tend to pick more blues and, and things like that. But um, pick that that shade that looks good on you. Mm-hmm. That when you go shopping, it's easy. These are the colors I look good in. But I, if you want to look more sophisticated and feminine, try just a, just try to go for more jeweled tones in your wardrobe. You know, if you're wanting to be a little bit more girly and playful, then go for those lighter colors and those more play playful, fun colors to enhance your femininity. And if you're going for patterns, stick to more classic and simple patterns. If you're trying to enhance your femininity, if you're trying to be more girly, look for patterns that are a little bit more whimsical and fun. I think just be careful with patterns and looking for patterns that aren't too busy and crazy. I love patterns. I just think that they can get a little bit over. And I've got something on with a lot of pattern in it. See, I love that because that's more patchworky and I think patchworky is really feminine. Okay, so next is one adornment at a time. It's sort of a little bit like the eyes and lips concept. When, when it comes to accessories, I think it's best less is more. A lot of women don't want to accessorize because they think it's uncomfortable because they think about earrings and necklaces and it's going to get in the way and I just don't want to deal with it. But you can pick other things to accessorize with, such as rings, uh, headbands, hats. There's so many ways you can do it, but don't go too overboard. How do you feel about wearing hair adornments like headbands? And there's uh, really cute hair things with other adornments like necklaces. It depends on... The size. It depends yeah. on the size, but some, some, can, some of us can get away with a little bit more than others, especially some of us that have this really beautiful manes of hair and you can kind of get away with a little bit more. I like to go a little bit more subtle, but that's just me. What about hats? I think that hats are so cute on so many women. I think berets are adorable. Some women like to wear scarves on their head. I think those are so pretty and feminine. The great thing about hats is that you don't have to have great hair and your hair doesn't have, it can be a bad hair day. And you put the hat on and it doesn't matter. Well, hats kind of seem fancy, but they don't have to be. They don't have to be fancy. Like when I think of hats, I almost immediately start to go to like the royal family and how they're always wearing these like beautiful, fancy hats, which I love, but that's not very practical. Well, I wouldn't know. <laughs> Every day. So I wouldn't <laughs> but to, know me, that's where you, that, to me, that's where you do like a headband. And I, I love I love headbands. I have a ton of headbands and I wear them a lot. But you, it's an easy thing to, to just put on to go with your outfit to look more right. feminine. Okay. Next, uh, number eight, shoes. So step into elegance with the right shoe. You're really passionate about shoes. You're better at this than me. Do you want to talk a little bit about how you select your shoes? (laughs) Well, okay. I'm older now. When I was younger, a lot more shoes were comfortable for me and now they're not. I used to have a lot of high heels and I don't because they kill my feet. And I think it just happens as you get older, but but it's important for me anyway. If I'm going to wear shoes for any length of time, they've got to be comfortable. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to wear really clunky shoes or dirty and worn out shoes and things that, that don't match what you're wearing. There's a lot of neutral shoes you can wear with a lot of things. What do you think is the most common shoe mistake that you see when it comes to femininity and style? Wearing athletic shoes that are made for athletics with everything. I with agree. With everything. And they, they do, people sometimes act like, well, it's just my shoes. It doesn't matter. But it actually kind of does. My plea is that there are comfortable shoes that are that are feminine, that are cute, that you can wear that actually are not that kind of a shoe and that will go with your clothes. I think one thing that I tend to do is I tend to do like a walk test when I'm trying on shoes. How do I look? And I know this sounds really silly, but I just walk in the shoes and see how I feel in them. If I feel like the shoes are just heavy and I'm not going to walk well, I may I may opt for a, a lighter shoe. I, I feel like shoes affect the way you walk. And this is important. You, you want to you want to have them, like you said, you want them to be comfortable. And if you're not comfortable in them, you're going to walk differently and that's going to affect your femininity and making sure that they're clean. If you have athletic shoes and you truly are wearing something athletic or athleisure, but your shoes are dirty and you haven't kept them up, you (laughs) prioritize keeping them clean is going to enhance your femininity. Even just that one tiny thing will enhance your femininity. You can get really comfortable, cute little tennis shoes. I know you and I both have uh, shoes that have patterns on them. We're so lucky to have so many amazing Keds out there, different things that you can get to go with your your cute little outfits. And you don't have to opt for that dirty athletic shoe ever. I know that sounds terrible. We all have athletic shoes and we all, of course, have to wear them from time to time. But just making sure that they're clean and they're well kept, I think is really important. Okay. Okay. Flattering foundations, undergarments that give confidence with comfort. This is so important, ladies. Your undergarments 
are so important. They do not have to be expensive. Undergarments are the foundation of every single thing you wear every single day. If you have your bra showing, if you have the, an ill-fitting bra, it's too small, it's too big, all of that is going to affect your appearance and your femininity. I can't tell you enough how important this is. Women that are wearing the wrong underwear that is showing through their garments and you can see it, it's taking away from your whole outfit. Forget about those expensive jeans, those expensive pants or that really expensive dress that you may have bought, how it's going to look on you if you have the wrong undergarments. It's just going to ruin it. And some of us who are a little bustier than others, when, if you're if you're very unwell and down, you, you, there's a lot of bras you can get that will be fine. But if you are more busty, you really need to get a good fitting bra. It'll, it'll affect how you feel as a feminine woman. I understand the challenge with having the bigger bust. It's really hard. And you go through stages too. Like I know with, you had seven kids, I have two kids. You have all these stages with your undergarments where you're bigger and you're smaller and you're nursing. And so many women wear sports bras underneath their clothes. And I, I that's fine, I guess, from time to time. But just remember, like that's not enhancing your femininity. You're just going to have what we call the uniboob, or you're going to have potato, sack of potato boobs. You don't want that if you're trying to be a more feminine woman. You want them to be in the right place. <laughs> Yeah. Goodness for bras. I'm so great. I'm so grateful for bras. And you know what else I'm grateful for? I'm so grateful for shapewear. I think shapewear is one of the most amazing new inventions for modern women. And it's not even that expensive. I know it first came out, it was a little expensive. And now there's a lot of knockoffs. You can get a lot of great quality shapewear for pretty, pretty cheap. And shapewear can help you not only with bumps and and lumps, <laughs> hiding your imperfections. It not only helps you with your actual shape, but it can help you with sweat. Did you have shapewear when you were younger? Yeah, it, but it, it was uncomfortable. It, it was, was called it was called a girdle, and and you know, like it wasn't as archaic as Gone with the Wind with those lace up things, but uh, it was not comfortable. There was like bone stays and stuff like that, and some of it. There's so many comfortable ones that you can wear that do the job, but you but you're not thinking, when can I get out of this? Well, shapewear to me is real. It, it's really comfortable. I, 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 that sounds terrible to have to wear all these like wires oh, things. Like, yeah, bone oh, folding. <laughs> okay, let's move on to number nine, which is one of my favorites. Natural beauty transcends trends. Can you explain this a little bit? Okay, what this means is avoid faking it too much. Stick to your natural beauty. Everybody has natural beauty. And if a trend doesn't look good on you, stay away from it. The other thing is enhancing and accentuating is our motto overall. Or if in the case of like, say you have blemishes and things like that, you can minimize the appearance of it when it calls for. But uh, emphasizing and accentuating your natural beauty, whether it's your eyes, your eyebrows, your, your lips or your hair, everybody has beauty. Yes, I completely agree with you. And I think one of the reasons why we wanted to talk about trends is because there are so many of us, myself included, we see these trends out there, whether it's beauty, products, hair, styling, and we, we think it's beautiful and we want to emulate that beauty with our own personal style. But then we kind of, some of us at least, take it a little too far. Or maybe we choose a trend that just doesn't really work on us. I see this all the time with makeup, with maybe hair styles or haircuts that just don't work on us, but maybe they worked on that beautiful model or actress you saw on the cover of a magazine, but it just doesn't work on you. And part of embracing your femininity is embracing your natural beauty. And of course, we love makeup when we love playing with different hairstyles and hair colors, but taking it so far can really take away from your femininity and I think this whole entire point is just about embracing your natural beauty. And I think this also applies to clothes. I think sometimes we see these great clothes out there that are trendy and they look so great on someone else, but then we put them on ourselves and we don't really realize that it's probably better to just ignore those trends and pick things that look good on our bodies and on our shapes and don't worry about what everyone else is doing. Do what's right for you. Right. Good. Good point. Okay. The last one is your lovely scent. No, this, I know it's not technically appearance because it's, but it is, it actually is your appearance because if you get up, have you ever passed somebody maybe in a store or, or at work or something, have you ever passed somebody and they just either smell horrible, like just terrible or the, uh, the reverse, they have so much perfume on that. You're like, Whoa. And, and it's not, and it's the not the way that they look. 
And it's a strong perfume. It's not, it's not real subtle and pleasant. It's a really strong. Yeah. I've passed, I've, I've sat next to people on subways that, you know, either way, yeah. either too much, too strong or really bad. How you smell attracts people to you or are away from you. <laughs> I think it's a, this is a very simple tip. It's about being clean stay and you know, that's a priority staying clean, but choosing scents that work on your skin. If you are testing out perfume at the store and you spray it on those little papers, you're not going to get a, a really accurate smell. You need to test it on you and on your, on your skin, because when you put fragrance on your skin, it reacts with your skin and it changes just slightly. So test it on your skin and find a scent that really works for you on your skin. Right. I, I agree. Uh, finding one that works for you and smells good on you is, is really important. And by the way, body splashes, they're not expensive. Yeah. And you can get, the, you can get those and splash those on and they're lighter. So they tend to be lighter scents. And try to avoid overly musky scents. If you're trying to be more feminine, overly musky smells are just a little bit more masculine. They're also not as attractive to men. If you're, if that's something that you're maybe you're dating and you you're trying to attract a man men tend to like a little bit more floral sweet or maybe more woodsy maybe you're someone that, that prefers things that are quite as floral then go for woodsy versus musk what you what you wear and what you smell like is your part of your total presentation yeah. and that's kind of what we're going for it doesn't mean all day long you got to spritz yourself because being clean is the foundation for it. Don't you love it when you hug someone and you just get this lovely scent from hugging them? And it's kind of almost like a little surprise because they don't have a lot on, but they have enough. And you hug them and you go, oh, that person smelled good. I think we all want to smell good. We all want to be that person. So what's your favorite perfume? I like floral. Florals. Floral. Do you have a specific brand that you love? I have several because I don't like just the same scent. I like to, I like to mix it up, but I tend to go for florals. Anthropology has some if any of you know about that store, has some amazing perfumes. They have several that I love. Um, I've worn the same scent for probably 20 years. <laughs> I wear I wear Lovely by Sarah Jessica Parker. It just it just smells good on me personally. I have a few others, but that's my kind of everyday. I'd love to know what everyone else loves. I, there's there's a lot of really great perfumes out there, and I'd love to hear what everybody else that's watching likes to use. Yeah, me too. I'd love to hear it. Okay, well, that's our list. What did we miss? What do you love to do to enhance your femininity? There's probably hundreds of other things that we left out, but these are just our favorite 10. Hope you enjoyed today's video. We would love to hear from you in the comments about what helps enhance your femininity and what some of your favorite tips are in today's video. Don't forget to hit subscribe and like. You'll help us grow our channel and we'll know that you're here watching with us. For those of you that have not read any of our books, we are attaching all of the links to purchase those below this video. Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless Woman is Dixie's book. You definitely need to read it. Not only talks about style and feminine appearance, but it talks about everything that has to do with developing femininity. You need to check that out. As well as all the other places you can find us on social media, those links will all be attached to the video. And That's we'll right. see you next time. Bye. Bye.